Hi guys, you're so welcome here to this channel NarcCon and to this community, this great community where we discuss all things in relation to narcissistic abuse in order to understand what we've been through and to move forward in a very awakened state. I'm going to do today part three of the No Closure series of videos where I will take on the narcissists, you know, play role as the narcissist and what actually goes on in their mind coming up to the discard and during the no closure phase after the discard or when you've escaped from them if they won't communicate with you. I'll analyse it as I go along and just a little warning because this is hard enough to take. Um, it's a very cruel thing you go through and it's very painful so if you've just been discarded or are going through a very painful time Please be aware that some of this may appear a bit tongue in cheek. Um, it may be something you'd like to revisit at a later stage, but it's actually what goes through, in my opinion, the narcissist mind from my own experience and from the education and I've received and from hearing you guys in coaching. I have a fair idea now of the way the cogs turn in the narcissist's mind, the cogs of the wheel turn. So I'll give it to you as best I can. Um, just before we get into the video, a lot of you have requested podcasts because they're easy, easier to listen to on walks and, and such like. So I'm going to leave a link to Spotify in the description below for anyone who wants to check out the podcasts. The older videos will be uploaded first, but the new videos will come on now each week as well. So I hope that's um, a, a facility that you can enjoy. So let's get into this. Now, the narcissist's thought processes, some of them are conscious, some of them are subconscious, and some of them are in between the two. So they might actually, in their mind, vocalize the thought that comes into their mind as they're going through the different feelings and emotions at these stages. But for the purposes of the video, I'm going to even bring the unconscious thoughts up. This is also a narcissist, guys. Narcissists vary. Some of them will think more violently and will act out more violently. Some of them will be much more strategizing and intellectual about the process that they go through and will think ahead to the consequences of their actions. This is for the commoner gardener narcissist who is in the normal type of, if we can call it normal, relationship with the target. Um, and this usually lasts from 12 to 18 months when they get into the intimate relationship. That's the usual time when they can't keep the mask on any longer. And with that lack of control that they have within themselves to pretend to be the mask, it slips. The devaluation of you starts because they can't keep this up. If they haven't achieved what they've set out to achieve in the relationship, obtained the benefits of the relationship, you go into a quicker devaluation phase. So let's take it from the devaluation phase towards the end of the relationship when they're getting ready to leave you, when they're getting ready to maybe groom a new supply or are already doing so. I don't know how much longer I can put up with this crap. I don't know how much longer. This person's really not who they appeared to be in the beginning. All that lovey-dovey stuff they went on with. Load of shite. Absolute load of garbage. Look, I'm going to have to just... I'm just going to have to bite my lip here. This isn't what this isn't what was it said on the tin. This doesn't do what it, they said on the tin at the beginning of the relationship. The show they put on for me. They showed me that they had potential and they showed me that we could have some kind of a future here. Everything now is an objection. Everything now there's a problem with. Anything I do, I stay out late. They're looking for explanations. They're looking for how I spend the money. They're giving out that I'm not giving them enough money. The turnaround on this person is just not acceptable. 
not accepted. They don't even appreciate me. They don't see what I do for them. So many people would be so happy to have me. What the hell am I going to do here? Well, Jessica said to me now on Facebook that she'd like to meet me for coffee. I need someone who understands me. I need to talk to someone about this crap that I'm going through here. Yeah. The arguments are incessant. I'm so annoyed. I'm so pissed off with this idiot. Right, calm down, calm down. We have to think about this. We're not just going to, you know, storm out of the house. I'll storm out tonight. I'll, I'll put her in her place tonight. I'll go and see Jessica and I'll figure something out here. I need to talk to the family as well. Actually, I think I'll ring one of my friends before I see Jessica. I need to get some feedback here on how I can extricate myself from this situation. There's been no improvement. Even the last time I left, there was no improvement. Oh yeah, I was sorry, I'm sorry. You know, let's talk about the relationship and we're gonna work things out. Yeah, that lasted for a few days. And then back to the O complaining again that I wasn't doing this and I wasn't doing that. I'm busy. I, I bring in money. I have a job to do. That type of work anyway, I was never interested in housework. At the beginning, like, he was going around doing all this housework, looking after me, bringing me cups of coffee. Oh, that soon died out. <laughs> that soon died out. All they think about is themselves. I'll stop here, guys. That's the narcissist. When the target is pushing back, is putting a few boundaries in because they realize they're being taken for a ride. They may say to the narcissist, um, you know, you need to contribute more financially that they finally realize that their generosity is being taken to the cleaners, that they're they're, the narcissist isn't contributing anything. The narcissist is staying out late. The narcissist isn't giving a damn about them. But to the narcissist, when the target pushes back, the, nar the narcissist's uh, trajectory or perspective is that the, nar that the target has changed and no longer appreciates this godlike presence. So that's what's going on in the devaluation phase. Now, the narcissist is also getting ready to set it up with friends and family that they're having a lot of problems in the relationship and the smear campaign starts. There was little twinges of it in the love bomb stage, but now the smear campaign in the background is getting well underway so that the narcissist has a, an instinctive feeling that they're going to get away from you because you're giving them way too much problems and way too much trouble. You're pushing back and actually asking for your needs to be met here. Let's go back to the narcissist. Hmm. Hmm. Jessica, yeah, she was okay. Yeah. I don't know if she'd be too much work. I don't know. I don't know if she'd be too much. I thought there was a bit of interest there from her, but I'm not so sure. I think I've got to meet her again. She could be, you know, we could, we could be an item. It's a possibility. Hmm. And Caroline's just texting me there from work. Yeah, I'll go out with Caroline as well. I need to get away from this person. I need to get away from this person. I need to get my head together. They're a cra they're crazy. Look at the drinking that they're doing at the moment. I mean, I was out late the other night. Come back. There she was sitting up drinking, asking me where was I. The state of it. The state of it. This isn't what I signed up for. This isn't me. This isn't what I'm worth. No bloody way am I staying with this person. I really need to get out and talk to my friends. And out the narcissist goes. Okay, I have a plan. I'm going to keep it lipped, keep it tight. I'll see if he'll marry me. I'll see if he'll marry me because this is a pretty good place. Like, I could get half of this. I mean, I've put up with a lot of crap. And I've put a lot of work into this place. And the money, the money I've given him. Oh, pfft. No, I've got to get something back here. I've got to get something back. I've got to make something out of this. I should not have had to go through putting that person up, you know, bringing that potential out on them. 
And because of me, they've gotten that new job. Because of me, they're sailing high now and demanding things from me. And I was the one that got them there in the first place. No way. I'm not leaving this without something. I'm going to go to a solicitor. I'm going to go to a lawyer. I want to see what my rights are here before I leave this. The lawyer is consulted. The narcissist gets the advice they need. They're not happy with it. They can't get as much as they wanted. In fact, they can't get anything. They haven't been there long enough. The hate starts to build. The vitriol. The rage comes towards the target. You're just crazy. You're absolutely crazy. You are not fit for a relationship. Absolutely no one would have you. You have so many issues. I don't know how you were ever married. I don't know how they stayed with you. Your family has told you. I'm telling you. Everybody knows that there's something wrong with you. The rage is over. The narcissist stays another few weeks. Totally makes sure that they're up on the knowledge of what they can get legally if they leave the situation now. They look into the pros and cons. They have to set something up. They're not going to lose out here. This is planned. They're not, they're going to set something up. So, you may get, I need a break. I need space. 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 Space is what the narcissist often comes up with. They'll either go for the space, see what effect it has on you, or they'll do the discard. At this stage, there's very little communication from them. What are they thinking? You need to learn your lesson. You need to learn a big lesson. You do not know what you have here. All your complaints, everything you've showed me now about who you are, you have totally changed since the beginning of the relationship. In fact, you lied about who you were. You don't appreciate anything I've done for you. You don't know how lucky you are to have me and you very soon are not going to have me. And the narcissist leaves. Huh. Yeah, a text. Yeah, another text. I don't want anything more to do with you. We're going to put a lid on this. I'm going to block, 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 block. I don't want to hear what you have to say. You have put me through hell. You're not going to do that again. You're going to learn your lesson. You are going to learn a lesson. What an idiot you are. You don't even know how life works. You believed all that crap. Having to say those things to you. Having to be, pretend I was in love with you. In the beginning. Oh, that actually made me want to vomit. That made me sick. Look, I did think that there was potential there. You had behaved yourself, there would have been potential there. This isn't the narcissist's mind now. They're not actually saying that out to you, although sometimes they will. They go to the family, look for support from the family, spent hours complaining about you, justifying why they've left you, getting support from the family, and they see your texts coming in. There's nothing else for I'm going to have to block this idiot. Anyway, I'm meeting Jessica tonight. There is no way I can take the chance that there's going to be a bombardment of texts, or actually... Maybe I'll leave it on because if I leave it on for a while and I am with Jessica and she sees how crazy this is, then it'll make more sense to her as to why I left. I mean, I need to show it. I need to show what I've actually had to go through with this crazy. He'll probably be drinking tonight. He'll probably be texting me every few minutes asking for explanations as to why I left. I told him why I left. I told him once, why should I have to tell him again after what he's put me through? No way. <laughs> A few weeks go by, you're blocked. They leave the email open. 
consistently, guys, narcissists will leave one form of communication open. And I'll do a video on why they leave the email open. But they leave the email open principally because their phone isn't being pinged when they're in situations where they're grooming new supply. At this stage, a month or two later, if you're still contacting the narcissist, they want to control that because they're with the new supply in a serious state. Their email they can monitor at their leisure. They're not being interrupted by you. So in other words, I leave the email open. Be interesting to see how this fool, you know, if they continue to contact me. And in any case, if they continue to contact me, I want evidence. I want evidence to go to the police. This total looper is still looking for me. I mean, I can understand that. But they've been told. They had their chance. They didn't take it. They put me through hell. So it's time that they got their comeuppance. They need to know how the world works. Living in cloud cuckoo land, into alternative therapies, loving everyone. Well, it's about time. They realised that's not how life works. That's not how life works. Good lesson for them. It's a good lesson for, for them. Hmm. I'll check the email tonight. It's very interesting to see what they're saying now. And actually, I can show it to my sister. We can have a good laugh about it at this stage. God, what an idiot. Actually, hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah, I leave the email open. There's no way I want them messing this relationship up. This relationship with Jessica is the one, this is the one for me. She sees me. She sees, she sees what you didn't, what that old fool didn't. I need to put a lid on that. I need to put a lid on that to control that. I tell you, if he sends me another email, I'm going to go to the police. I'll gather evidence. No, no one's going to mess this new relationship up. And Jessica has a really nice house. Oh, good business. We could go on a hell of a lot of holidays. That's what I want. I want to travel. I want to expand my mind. She's the person for me. Not this other complaining, whinging, drunken looper. Totally unfit for a relationship. I really got caught. I really got caught in that one. He really reeled me in. He reeled me in with all the, you know, I love you craps and buying me stuff and looking after me. I really, I got taken for a ride there. But my instincts kicked in once they started to show me who they really were. I was out of there. I was out of there. No way. No way. I deserve a hell of a lot better than that crap. So guys, whether you agree or disagree, that's a lot of what goes on in the narcissist's mind. It's quite a immature, it's a very immature response to what's going on. It's the narcissist bringing their own story upon what's happening in the situation, making it all about them and you all wrong, taking absolutely no accountability for their part in the relationship. They actually, even if you give them facts, they will turn those facts upside down and make it into something else. Because of their narcissism, they cannot allow reality in. Reality has to be manipulated. Because of their narcissism, so that it doesn't get in beyond the shield, beyond the mask. So it's basically recycled into their perspective can be the total opposite to factual truth, to reality as perceived by the majority of people. But it suits their agenda and they work that agenda into other people's realities. They actually lie, they tell blatant lies, but from their perspective, it's the truth because it's how they perceive things to have been because of their narcissism because they're unaccountable,
because they're entitled, because they feel they're always right, because they feel they know everything and they know best, they change the truth into a truth that they present to people to make it as believable as possible, telling people you're crazy, telling people you're unfit for a relationship, telling people that they had to put a lid on it. That actually happened to me. They had to put a lid on it on you, a lid on a person. So that's the way they project it. And they have started a smear campaign on you before the discard and before the no closure stage so that you feed into the agenda they've set or the way they've set you up as being crazy. And then they will go to their friends and family and say, now you can see why I had to leave him or her. And the friends and family are going, you're getting a lot of texts, okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And the ones that know that this person has done this loads of times before just kind of go, okay, they know better than to question. They nod, they accept, they just say it's another one bites the dust and get on with their own lives in as much as possible. That's usually the narcissist's family. Some of them will give them more attention than others. And the ones that are climatized to the narcissist cycle and patterns will give a little attention and then get on with their own lives. But they know what's happened. You are a consequence, a collateral consequence of the narcissist cycles. So guys, this is the time to get off the rat wheel that the narcissist has put you on and understand that the narcissist has not gone off thinking that they're sorry for what they've done, that they're, that the no closure is in some way their way of helping you heal. This is, this is the truth of what's going on in their minds. They're the wronged person and they have a, a hatred for you at this stage because you one dared ask for your needs to be met. They saw that as a total critique of them and two, you may be standing in the way of their progressing in their life. I hope that was of help and leave in the comments if you agree or what you believe your narcissist was thinking at the time of discard or no closure. I will see you again soon. Thank you for being here and thank you for listening.